So we're back. We're back out in Plaza de Armas, and we're right here in front of Museo Histórico Nacional, National History Museum. And I kind of want to go in this place. Uh, when we were here last time at uh, Plaza de Armas, seeing all the different places, didn't get a chance to go in, but we should go in there, right? It's history, it's a museum, it's free. This is what we like to do on this channel, so let's go in and take a look. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So right away when I entered the museum, I was told I was not allowed to film inside the museum. But I was allowed to take pictures, which I did. In the main courtyard of the museum, you can see that the building is a very cool sort of uh, Spanish colonial era building. There is a tower on the building that overlooks the entire plaza. And you're actually allowed to go up in the tower, and we're going to do that at the end of the video. And there's some great views of the plaza, so make sure you stick around for that. But going into the main exhibition of the museum, there is greeting you on the stairway up to the main exhibition a painting of the founding of Santiago by Pedro de Valdivia, La Fundación de Santiago. And upstairs, one of the first things you see is this model of the Puente Cal y Canto, the Bridge of Cal y Canto, which is a very uh, historical, old, famous bridge. Actually, uh, has been torn down now, but um, it was a engineering marvel of its time. And actually, our video about uh, the markets of Santiago, the site of the bridge is actually right next to those markets. So check that video out. The link will be down in the description. Now, the whole museum is sort of laid out in chronological order. So the first room was the society, uh, like uh, what society was like in uh, the 18th century. So del siglo, siglo means century, 18th, 18th century. You can see some very fancy clothing here inside this uh, case. What's what a noble person would be wearing in the uh, 16th century, or I'm sorry, the uh, 18th century. And there was also a painting of uh, Garcia Francisco Garcia de Huidobro, the uh, first Marquis of the Casa Real. There he is, right there, and underneath the painting. Presumably his couch, where his famous butt would once have sat. The next room is detailing the collapse of the empire. Because, honestly, the Spanish colonial empire times were kind of boring. Let's get to the real good stuff, the collapse of the empire. And here, we see some very famous uh, paintings of very famous people who we recognize from other videos. Jose de San Martin, right here. We've made a video about him for sure. And Bernardo O'Higgins. And also, in this same room, a painting of someone who we haven't talked about yet, but who is very important to the history of Chile. Jose Miguel Carrera. And O'Higgins and Carrera are basically considered to be the two founding fathers of Chile. And their story is extremely, extremely interesting. There will be a video coming soon, specifically about the story of Carrera and O'Higgins because their relationship and their story, their history together was very, very interesting. But also in this room with those paintings was this old carriage, which is like a, a presidential carriage, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, it's very small, actually, when you get up close to it, you, you realize, especially someone like me, who's very tall, that I would never be able to fit in that thing. So maybe everybody was a little bit, a little bit smaller back in the day. And also in here, the original seal of the old homeland, La Patria Vieja. And also here, a fragment of the first uh, shield of the Republic that presumably came from some building or statue. Um, it was hard, hard to tell exactly, it was just sort of sitting on the floor right here, but obviously very important since they put it in the museum. Also in here, a picture, a painting rather, of the Battle of Maipu. 
The Battle of Baipu was a very, very famous battle. It's basically the decisive battle for the uh, War of Independence in Chile. And after this battle, the Battle of Maipu, Chile was essentially independent from the Spaniards. And uh, so it's a very, very famous battle. It was fought just on the outskirts of the city of uh, Santiago. And we actually get a chance to visit Maipu. And there will be some, uh, some of our visit in the later videos. Also in this room, the flag of the, uh, like the first flag of the independence of, of Chile which looks, doesn't look like the, uh, the flag does today, but it's a very, very interesting flag. They had it in there underneath a big glass case. And in this room with the flag, there were some paintings, oil paintings, of the first naval squadron of Chile, like the first navy of Chile, which was raised actually during the War of Independence. And Got a close-up of the flagship here, which I thought was really cool. Look at the size of that thing. All those cannons sticking out of the side. And they actually had one of the old cannon. I don't know if it was exactly from that ship, but looked pretty old. Looked like it could have been from that ship. As well, in this room, some uh, sort of tools used for navigation on the sea during that time. A compass a sextant, and a telescope. And then, in this room, up above uh, the flag, was a very interesting painting. And this painting is actually, the title of it is The uh, Final Moments of uh, Jose Miguel Carrera. Now, I mentioned Jose Miguel Carrera and Bernardo O'Higgins have a very interesting story. And this was the final moments before his death. That's what uh, Carrera's death, that's what this painting depicts. Very important uh, event. And stick around, like I said, for a future video that is going to talk specifically about O'Higgins and Carrera and their story. Because it's very, very interesting. So moving on to the re next room, it was the recomposition of order. So after the War of Independence, um, attempting to basically put the uh, country together as a new, newly founded republic. And uh, the most interesting thing in this next room, I thought, was this sort of 3D model map of the city of Santiago, at least the center part of the city. And now this is looking west. Um, the top part of the, the map here is actually west. So we're facing west, and you can see Santa Lucia Hill and uh, bordered by the Alameda, Avenida Bernardo O'Higgins, the Mapocho River to the north, and Plaza de Armas, where the museum itself is located. Now, after I looked at this map for quite a while, I turned around to see that the walls were covered with, like, a ton of more portraits of presumably very famous people who were, uh, you know, integral to the forming of the Republic. And what I realized at this point is there's no way that I'm going to be able to take pictures of each individual painting for this entire museum and be able to call them all out. So here are some really important people. I don't know who they are. If you do, put it down in the comment. And there's another one. And there's some more. And even more right here. One thing I will say for all of these people, the men at least, fantastic sideburns, gentlemen, fantastic. In this next room, there were these chairs, which, of course, we know some famous butts must have sat in at some point. And also, a model of Plaza de Armas, and what it must have looked like back in the 1800s, in the early days of the Republic of Chile. This guy, I don't know who he is, but I give him the award for best facial hair in this section of the museum and his runner-up is this guy right here now he doesn't have the same level of volume of facial hair as our other friend but that mustache is very dashing so i must say he, he he's quite the figure and this section moved forward into a section about education which was also developing during the 1800s and you can see they had an old desk, and 
the desk had an old chair where presumably a famous butt once sat. And up on the wall here, they had some pictures of like a typical class, what it would look like in a school back, back then. A class, uh, for example, like this one, which would be a class in a very rural and poor school, and then a much wealthier school, potentially probably an urban school. And you can definitely see the differences between the two. They also had pictures of adult education, which was presumably going on at the time. The next room, the liberal order. And here, what I thought was most interesting was they talked about the industrial revolution in Chile and they showed a photograph of a very early, um, they call it the Casa de Moneda. Moneda means currency. So it's the house of currency. So basically, this is where they are, they are minting currency. And they actually had one of the machines here in the room that you could see, where they would press coins and currency for the New Republic. Also in here, as a development of the Industrial Revolution, they showed a painting of a battle between two Ironside steamships. And this, if you very, look very closely, at the flags, you can see it's the flags of Chile and Peru, meaning that this was a battle during the War of the Pacific in the very late 1800s. Last interesting painting in this room was a painting showing uh, cranes and people working to remove stone, and they were removing stone from the Mapocho River bed. And this stone was used actually to build the Cal Icanto, the bridge whose model we saw at the beginning of the video. The next room, El Parlamentarismo, the Parliament, the parliamentary system. And here, lightning round for pres former presidents of Chile, including Frederico Erazuriz Echauren. Apologies, of course, if I am butchering these names, which I probably will be. Domingo Santa Maria Gonzalez and Jorge Mont Alvarez. This is a painting of basically every important figure from the parliamentary era, and I cannot name really any of these guys, but if you can, here's your contest. <laughs> See if you can name all of them. Now moving on to the next room, we're getting into the 20th century, which is the era that I find probably most interesting after the War of Independence era. The photographs here see things that you didn't see in some of the previous photographs, like automobiles, like electric streetlights. And some of the architecture here is really, really pretty amazing. It's a style of architecture that I really, really enjoy. And of course, it's photographs of everything and not paintings. Of course, later on, there were some photographs of what it looked like uh, living in Chile if you weren't so wealthy. Rural life in Chile, an urban slum in Chile, and of course, the way the wealthy lived, horse-drawn carriages, automobiles, picturesque tree-lined streets. Back in this time in Chile, there was a lot of wealth inequality, as there was in many industrializing uh, nations at the time in the early 20th century. Now. This next room had a very, very interesting uh, historical artifact, two of them in fact. One was the chair of President Joaquin Preto and also the dog 
of President Arturo Alessandri Palma. Now, a famous butt sat in the chair, and the dog, this is not just a reproduction of the president's dog. This is the actual president's dog who was taxidermied after his death. So that is the dog stuffed right there in the museum. Now, moving on past into the second half of the 20th century, we get to the popular front. The Frente Popular, the Unidad Popular. Some public works posters, which I thought were really, really interesting. Um, very cool art design on all of them. And a picture of Salvador Allende making a speech in Washington, D.C. with John F. Kennedy, President John F. Kennedy, right there next to him. There's some pictures in here of public housing buildings that were built during Allende's uh, presidency, as well as uh, a dress that sort of represented what fashion, women's fashion, would have looked like. Very interestingly, if you could look next to the dress on the left, you can see some people meeting in front of a very large picture of Che Guevara. And if you're interested in knowing more about Che Guevara, we actually have a video on visiting his childhood home in Alta Gracia, outside of Cordoba in Argentina. Check, check for the, uh, the link in the description for that video. Now also in this room, there were newspapers from different, um, different countries that were reporting on the death of Allende and the military takeover in, uh, in Chile. Pinochet's military takeover in 1973. And you can see the coverage from all different countries. The United Kingdom, Spain, France, and right here in Chile as well. At this point, I decided to leave the museum because we weren't allowed up in the tower just yet, but I still wanted to get into that tower. All right, that was actually very cool. Uh, there's a lot more in there than I thought there was gonna be, honestly. And uh, what I really like about it is, it was arranged in a very like sequential, um, you know, room by room. Each room had its own theme. Each uh, room, you know, like, it, it was like the next era right in Chilean history and they had a bunch of artifacts and, and paintings and uh, portraits and stuff like from that era so I thought that was really cool about halfway through I had to just stop taking pictures of everything because there was just way too much um, especially like portraits and paintings of people way way too many for me to go through and honestly like I, I kind of only know the major major figures especially from like the war for independence right um, and really because like there's just way, way too much uh, history to learn. So I did get a lot of pictures, which is great. And, um, you know, of course, a lot of them made it into the video you just saw. But one thing that we can do is in about an hour and maybe like an hour or so, we can go back, we can get a guide, and they do a tour up to the tower, uh, like on the third or fourth floor, and you can like see out onto the plaza from the tower. So I think we're gonna do that. But in the meantime, we got about an hour to kill. And uh, as part of our uh, video, where we tried a, uh, a completo in our video about San Cristobal Hill. We made a pledge that we were gonna try more completos, completos from different places in the city. So I think we're gonna do that now. We're gonna do a bit of completo. We're gonna try it, we're gonna see how it is. Don Jose, Fuente de Soda Don Jose, or 
Fuente de Refrescos. Fuente de something. It's a soda fountain, basically. There's no seats. You just stand there. And uh, I to this old beer, too, so I got a, I got a Cristal. Cristal, which is like the beer of the people of Chile. Right? That's kind of what I've gathered. Kind of like what Quilmes was in Argentina. That's what Cristal is in, uh, in Chile, in Santiago, at least. So that was pretty good. The weird thing was it, it didn't have avocado on it, which, I don't know. I think the thing I ordered before was a completo italiano, technically, which had avocado and tomato and mayo. This one had tomato, mayo, and some sort of like a salsa sort of a thing on it. I don't know. I'm not sure. Any Chilenos, if you're watching this, give me a little education down in the comments about my completos and what's the difference. And uh, also, if a completo italiano is tomato, mayonnaise, and, uh, and avocado on a hot dog, how the hell is it called an italiano? I have no idea. Like, that doesn't sound very Italian to me. Maybe I'm just like a dumb gringo and I don't know any better, but it's weird. Where'd the italiano name come from? I have no idea. Anyway. Uh, we killed a little bit of time, we had a beer, we had a completo, the best completo that we've had so far here in Santiago, and uh, now we're going to go back and go up on the top of that tower. Well, we got up to the tower. Amazing view from up there. And uh, interesting to know, like, you know, how it was the sort of the history of it. Um, basically, we had a guide to go up there. You can't just go up there by yourself. You need a guide. And she explained there's like floors on the way up. You take a spiral staircase to get up there. And uh, it doesn't cost anything, it's free. But it only happens every, you know, few hours or so. And you take a spiral staircase, and each floor there's like a little explanation of, you know, what. Uh, um, what happened and when it happened and when they made it open to the public when they reinforced it with those uh, those concrete beams that I showed when they added uh, lights and a mechanical clock and all kinds of stuff but anyway I think the real uh, the real highlight is the view from up there to see the whole plaza from above really nice very cool view anyway I think that's gonna be it for this video I am actually gonna go around the corner here and visit another museum but that's going to be in a future video for you all. So, I hope you enjoy this video. Stay tuned. There's going to be a plenty more from here in Santiago, Chile. And uh, we'll see you soon.